9-11 report. Uh, Missed signals and outright failures leading up to America's darkest day and a chilling warning. The worst may be yet to come. Terror politics. It didn't take long. The 9-11 report already a political football on the 2004 presidential campaign. And the prison abuse. The truth about torture at Iraqi and Afghan prisons worse than originally thought. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening. America is safer, but not safe. And an attack even greater than 9-11 is possible, even probable. That was the sobering and unsettling prologue to the report today of the commission investigating the attacks of 9-11. Why they happened, what went wrong, what some possible solutions may be. The bipartisan commission said two administrations, Congress and a wide range of government agencies and officials, failed to take the threats seriously enough. The commission also made a number of recommendations and urged both parties to find common ground in acting on the report's findings. We'll begin with the report, NBC's chief investigative correspondent, Lisa Myers. It's a report full of chilling detail and stark warnings that the war against al-Qaeda is an epic struggle, the challenge of a generation. Every expert with whom we spoke told us an attack of even greater magnitude is now possible and even probable. Commissioners warn al-Qaeda is searching for creative ways to kill Americans and reveal that hijacker Mohammed Atta cased a nuclear power plant in New York. As for 9-11, the report finds no one individual is to blame, but every senior official bears some responsibility, and that both Presidents Clinton and Bush could have done more to deal with the threat. They did not take it uh, as seriously as it should be taken. It was not their top priority. The fact of the matter is uh, we just didn't get it in this country. Many of the failures were by the CIA and FBI. The commission says neither president had adequate intelligence. How in God's name are you supposed to imagine a threat if the facts are being withheld from you? Also, new details about 9-11. In Afghanistan, hijackers butchered a sheep and a camel with a knife to train for the mission. And dramatic details about the final moments of Flight 93 as passengers began to rush hijackers in control in the cockpit. Pilot Ziad Jara, is that it? Shall we finish it off? Unidentified hijacker, no, not yet. When they all come, we finish it off. Passenger, in the cockpit. If we don't, we'll die. Passenger, roll it. Jara, Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. Is that it? I mean, shall we put it down? As the passengers continue their assault, a hijacker responds, yes, put it in it and pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Hijackers pull down on the control wheel, the plane rolls, and crashes into the ground in Pennsylvania. For all the recommendations of the panel, many of which would take years to implement, none deal with what many senior intelligence officials worry is the big threat, a biological or chemical attack. Lisa Myers, NBC News, Washington. The commission urged strong, swift action to prevent the future deadly attacks it warns about in the report. In the words of Chairman Kane, we do not have the luxury of time. Among the commission's recommendations, a new national intelligence chief to make sure that intelligence collection by a dozen or so government agencies is coordinated and focused. Also, a new national counterterrorism center that would become the clearinghouse for all U.S. intelligence and would assign the various agencies to collect intelligence at home and abroad. And the report says Congress has too many committees overseeing intelligence and homeland security and recommends that they be combined into one or two domestic security committees. The report also recommends against an entirely new domestic spy agency. The commission was chaired by former New Jersey Governor Tom Kane, a Republican, and former Indiana Congressman Lee Hamilton, a Democrat. They achieved something rare in Washington these days, bipartisan unanimity. And tonight, I spoke with them. Governor, let me begin with you. How does this new structure that you have recommended, which does have several layers to it, make us safer, especially since you also say that the threat is real and immediate? One of the big failures on 9-11, perhaps the biggest failure, was the lack of a sharing of information. We had enough pieces of information 
in the various intelligence agencies, had they been shared together, where well, you might have been able to disrupt or stop the plot, but they didn't get shared. Congressman, uh, you say today that we are safer, but we're still not safe. A lot of people believe, in fact, that we're not safer as a result of the war in Iraq, that America has become a larger target, not a smaller one. First of all, we're approaching the 9-11 third anniversary. Uh, we've not had a terrorist attack on American soil. Uh, something is being done right. But we also know that the intent to kill Americans is still there. Uh, the capability to kill Americans is still there. And so we're not totally safe. Congressman, are they going to have to give up some of their liberties that they've taken for granted even more than a more rigorous search at airport security places, for example? Uh, my judgment is yes. Uh, we're going to have to accept in our lives uh, more intrusion than we would like, perhaps, in a lot of different ways. Governor, there's already been a fair amount of discussion about lack of actionable intelligence or a debate about whether we should move or not move against a target. This is a war against an enemy playing by a whole new set of rules. Are we going to have to break some of the old rules ourselves? I think we're going to have to break from the old rules and break from the old institutions. They were good. But this is a new stateless enemy. Uh, they're attacking us in a whole new manner. It's going to go beyond us and to our children's generation. Gentlemen, thank you very much, and thanks for all you've done. Thank you, sir. The 9-11 Commission's work, even the existence of the Commission itself, has been a political football, of course, right from the start, and that continued on the campaign trail today. More on that tonight from NBC's David Gregory. At the White House this morning, the president formally accepted the 9-11 report and praised the commission for offering what he called sound recommendations. I assured them that where uh, government needs to act, we will. Despite all the appearance of bipartisan agreement, today's report was immediately thrust into the fight for the White House. Later on the campaign trail in Illinois, Mr. Bush brushed aside criticism in the report, insisting the commission endorse the administration's actions since 9-11. The commission's recommendations are consistent with the strategy my administration is following to address these failings and to win the war on terror. In Detroit today, Senator Kerry said the findings should not be politicized, but then blamed the Bush administration for not making the country as safe as it could be. This report makes it clear that has not happened, even three years after, almost three years after September 11th. And on Capitol Hill, the debate has already begun about what's next. The bipartisan 9-11 Commission has spoken, and now we'll see if the Republican leadership is listening. We've impl implemented a lot of these things even before this commission report has, c has come out. Anything that we're going to do is going to be deliberate and not rushed. The 9-11 Commission has been a centerpiece of election year politics from the start. The Bush White House initially opposed the creation of the commission. Now its findings come as the president invokes the 9-11 attacks in his pitch for a second term on the stump and in campaign ads. The, uh, the 9-11 Commission report underscored how much the danger persists. And the, ex to the extent that the public sees the danger uh, persisting, bluntly, that's good for the, the Bush campaign. However important both sides say this report is, Congress appears unlikely to act on the Commission's recommendations this year, even as the President appears poised to name a new CIA director and propose his own intelligence overhaul before the election. David Gregory, NBC News, the White House. In the midst of all of this tonight, there's a new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll on the state of the presidential race. When asked if they think things in the country are going in the right direction or off on the wrong track, almost half, 48% said we're on the wrong track. That's exactly the same number as last month. The matchup between President Bush and Senator Kerry still is a dead heat. 47% for Bush Cheney, 45% for Kerry Edwards, 2% said they would vote for Ralph Nader. As for Senator Kerry, as he heads into the convention, he has a big opportunity to introduce himself to millions of Americans, while 66% say they know a lot or a fair amount about Kerry and his positions. 34% say they know only some or very little about him. There's been a deadly accident on a crowded high-speed train that went into service only about a month ago. It happened in northwestern Turkey on a train traveling from Istanbul to Ankara. 
At least 36 people were killed, several more were injured. Four of the cars derailed and flipped over. The train reportedly was traveling at 45 to 50 miles an hour at the time. Critics have been warning that Turkey's worn out rail system needed to be completely modernized before it could safely run high speed trains. NBC News in depth tonight, the 9-11 families, those who lost loved ones in the terror attacks almost three years ago now. It was in large part because of their persistence that the establishment of the 9-11 Commission happened in the first place. NBC's Chip Reed has more now on how some of the family members feel about the Commission's conclusions today. It's been nearly three years since the 9-11 attacks. For the victims' families, it's been an agonizing wait for a full explanation. 28-year-old Joshua Rosenblum died in the World Trade Center just four days before he was to be married. Today in Florida, his mother reacted to the report with a mixture of frustration and hope. I wanted someone to be responsible. I wanted the buck to stop on, stop on someone's desk. And um, that hasn't happened. But I think to a certain degree I've gotten beyond that. And I, I, I need to look at the bigger picture, which is not my needs, but the needs of this country. Tom Burke worked on one of the top floors of the Trade Center. His brother Chris in New York City today says he's relieved the commission steered away from political finger pointing. If we can't find a way to come together and institute effective solutions, we're going to find ourselves back at square one. And square one is ground zero. 37-year-old Ronald Hemingway was an electronic engineer at the Pentagon. Today in Shawnee, Kansas, his parents were disappointed. What they finally put out, um, according, it's no news, really. It's what we've been hearing all along. Catherine Wolfe was a broker in the North Tower of the Trade Center. Her husband says he likes what he heard today, but is worried about what happens next. If it stops here, let me tell you something, our goose is cooked. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. This is why this is so important. Sean Rooney died after becoming trapped in the burning South Tower. His wife, Beverly Eckert, today said she's upset with Congress for suggesting they won't have time to take up the commission's recommendations until next year. I think that's an unreasonable um, reaction. I, it, we're three years out. We don't have any more time to wait. What are we waiting for, honestly? The next attack. Badly injured in the Pentagon attack, April Gallup agrees. We're just beginning. Uh, a lot of people think now that the commission is over, with, that it's over, we're just getting started. A call to action from the families of 9-11. Chip Reed, NBC News, Washington. Up next, my interview with Senator John Kerry, the roots of terror, questions about America's standing in the Middle East. As has been reported earlier, the 9-11 Commission identified Iran to a much greater degree than Iraq as a passageway for Al-Qaeda operatives. In my interview with Democratic presidential nominee John Kerry last night, I asked about Iran and also about the tone of the campaign, specifically the comments of Julian Bond, the head of the NAACP. There's strong evidence that Iran is in pursuit of a nuclear weapon at some stage. There's also strong evidence that it's now meddling in Iraq. So was President Bush wrong to characterize it as part of the axis of evil, Iran? I think that the term axis of evil is a misapplied term, frankly, uh, historically and in terms of the present. Iran is a problem. Iran, in fact, was a greater problem than Iraq at the time that the president started the war in Iraq. North Korea was a greater problem than Iraq at the time the president started the war in Iraq. The United States of America should have long ago offered the following deal. If Iran is serious about not pursuing nuclear weapons, we'll supply you with the nuclear power and we'll contain the nuclear material that's, that's created as a result. As you know, the United States has no better friend in the region than King Abdullah of Jordan. And he told me recently that now there is hostility toward not just the American government, but the American people. And the root of it all, the root of terrorism, is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The policy that Ariel Sharon announced in Gaza is the policy that in effect was arrived at in the negotiations and agreed to by all parties. And people who are claiming that the adoption of that policy is somehow a roadblock to the ability to make peace are really frankly once again exploiting the issues in the region. What is missing is an Arab a Palestinian entity that can actually deliver peace. 
And you saw the riots in the streets the other day as people are rising up against Arafat's own failed leadership. When Julian Bond, who's the head of the NAACP, said the other day that the Republican Party's idea of equality is flying the American flag and what he called the swastika of the Confederate flag side by side, did that make it more difficult for you to attract so-called NASCAR dads and other swing voters in America? Well, I hope not. I mean, I hope, uh, you know, I think people in America understand that there's an anger in certain people, there's a frustration. I'm feeling it all across the country right now. People are frustrated. They want real problems dealt with, Tom. I'm running for president. I want to be president of all Americans, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, and so I'm trying to choose language that I think reflects the nature of the role I'm asking Americans to allow me to assume. And I don't agree when we get that kind of anger in our language. We have to stop it. Senator Kerry today addressed the National Urban League in Detroit, and President Bush will make an appearance there tomorrow. On Wall Street today, stocks opened down a bit, but managed to finish the day with modest gains. The Dow was up just over four points. NASDAQ gained almost 15 points on the day. Then there was... NC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw, brought to you in part by... Af and say to America in a loud, clear voice, send John Kerry. God bless you. Good morning. Former President Bill Clinton rallying the party faithful at the Democratic National Convention. Tonight, the delegate...